走。Steady. All right, let's have it on the truck. Is that all they need? Yeah, I think so. And how long will it take to fill the order this time, eh? Oh, probably three to four weeks. Uh, you know, they ought to give us better service. And a boat coming once a week is not enough. You think at least they'd get our telephones installed? Yeah, and they promised them this year. <laughs> yeah, and last. Morning, Campbell. Peter, here you are. Good morning, Dr. Landers. Good morning. I'd like to mail these, please. Oh, more books, Doctor? You islanders are too hardy. I have to do something to keep busy. You know, Doctor, you and I should take up chess. I've got nothing to do either, except when Andy McCracken has a wee drop too much and tries to break up the pub. <laughs> Why don't you try talking to Dr. Phillips over there? doesn't like company much. That's why he picked as isolated a place as this. No contact with the mainland. Well, he's an odd one. He's not really. He's one of the top researchmen in the world. Researchers are like that. Yeah, well, we wouldn't mind a bit of contact. They don't care about us because we don't pay enough taxes. Isn't that right, Constable? You speak for yourself, Ian. <laughs> you know what it is? It smells like fog. Nonsense. I think it's going to be a lovely evening. Well, if you weren't a newcomer, you'd feel it in your bones. A newcomer? I've been here for ten years. Well, a newcomer just the same. Cell cultures are prepared. We're ready to begin. What about Rome, New York, Tokyo? Are we going ahead without hearing from them? Yes, I mailed them four reports this morning. They'll start as soon as they get them. The potential across the cell membrane must be maintained during a radiation of the nucleus. Is the tritium stage complete? Yes. And the uh, vapor applicator? It's been corrected. The histo-connect problem has been solved. There shouldn't be any snags. Good. Now that we've received the infusion equipment, well, I'm certain they will understand my reason for going ahead. I waited a long time for this moment. If we are successful today, it may well be that we have the cure for cancer.
Mrs. Bellows, come in. Thank you. Go over there by the fire. Now, what brings you out on a night like this? Oh, I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm worried about Ian. He hasn't come home. Well, sit down and I'll uh, get you some tea. Oh, no, no thank you. No, no, Please. settle down, settle down and just tell me all about it. Ian hasn't come home. He's three hours late and that isn't like him. I'm afraid something's happened to him. Ach, no, I'm sure nothing's happened. Uh, did you try the pub? Yes, and they haven't seen him. I've been all around the village. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll look about for him. You go on home and I'll be around with him. I don't think he's had an accident. Ach, no. I'm sure everything's all right. I'll take a look up at your north field near Phillips's house. Now, you go on home and don't you be worrying. Oh, I'll do as you say, Constable. I'm sorry to have been such a nuisance. You're no you. nuisance. That's what I'm here for. Well, thank you very much indeed. That's easily shaken, Dr. Landers. I know that, Anna. Would you like a drink? No, no, no. I've just seen something, and by all that's holy, I just can't be sure, but I think it's Ian Bellows. You think it's Ian? What's happened to him? I, I don't know. His body's all like, like jelly. Jelly? Aye. It's like nothing I've ever seen. There was no face, just a horrible mush with the eyes sitting in it. Where did this happen? Up near the peninsula, on the path to Parsons Cove. Did anyone else see it? No. No, I don't think so. Come on. I've got my hat and coat. Come on, we'll go over there. It's a body, but I can't recognize it. Those are Ian Bellows' clothes. Yes. What's happened to him? I don't know. I don't know. As far as I can tell, the body doesn't seem to have any bones. No bones? Look. You see? Right. I'll have to make a closer examination. We'll have to get it back to the village. Right. I'll go and get something to carry it on. I'll wait here. Hurry up, will you?
Well, it's definitely Ian. I recognize the appendectomy scar and birthmark. My God. What am I going to tell Mrs. Bellows? I'll come with you. I'll give her a sedative. God knows she'll need it. John, I don't want you to mention anything to her about the condition of the body. No, of course not. I understand. In fact, I don't want this mentioned to anyone. Well, they'll have to know soon enough. Not until I find out what we're dealing with. What are you going to do? First, I'll go and see Phillips. I need expert help. This is quite beyond my knowledge. Well, what if he won't help or can't? Well, then I'll take the emergency launch and go and see Brian Stanley in London. Well, don't forget that launch is our only contact with the mainland in case we need help. Don't worry, I'll come back immediately. Who is this uh, Brian Stanley? He's the most eminent pathologist in Great Britain. Hmm. Whatever this disease is, it's virulent and could be contagious. We can't take chances. By the way, we might fly back. So build a signal fire on more heights. Right. That'll be all for today, gentlemen. I, uh, I do hope that something of what I've been saying has penetrated. Judging from your last papers, I doubt if any of you will progress beyond first aid. <laughs> today. Oh, uh, Dr. Stanley, yes? uh, this is Dr. Landers. Oh, yes, I had your telephone message. How do you do? Don't you sit down? Thank you. I practice on Pitches Island, Doctor. <laughs> Where the devil's that? It's off the east coast of Ireland. Oh, yes. Well, what can I do for you? Doctor, do you know of any disease that could completely dissolve human bone? No, I don't. Why do you ask? We've discovered a body without any trace of bone in it. No bone? You certain? Quite certain. Now, that's unbelievable. You haven't heard of anything like this before? No, nothing even remotely like it. I was hoping you could help me. There was no trace of bone whatsoever? None. Well, if that's true, it's beyond me. It's true. I performed a complete autopsy. Hmm. Have you heard of David West? I think so, yes. He's the most qualified man on bone disease that I know. I suggest we see what we can find at the medical library first. If that doesn't give us anything, we'll pop around and see David. If you think he'll help. If anyone can, he can. your bathrobe. I'm sure you don't find the female anatomy so shocking, Doctor. It's a bit different from Harley Street. How's your dress? Oh, the spot's out, but I'm afraid it'll take some time to dry. Teal beautifully, don't you think? I'm afraid the credit isn't all mine. Excellent cognac, David. Coming from an expert, that's quite a compliment. Oh, you shouldn't believe everything you read in the newspapers about me. They're a bit exaggerated. Everything about you seems a bit exaggerated. <laughs> You're too charming. Do you think I had to break a leg to meet you? Not to mention writing off a very expensive Maserati. You should be flattered. It isn't every girl who goes to such lengths to meet a man. Besides, I'm sure it's going to be worth it, isn't it? I may not get places as fast as a Maserati. But you do get there eventually, don't you? Eventually. When? I'll let you know. Don't take too long. You might run out of petrol on the last lap. Is that a pit stop or the checkered flag? I don't know. But in the meantime, you'll find my dressing gown in the bathroom. Brian, what the devil do you want at this time of night? Good evening, David. I hope we are interrupting something. Dr. David West, may I present Dr. Reginald Landers? How do you do? I think he's brought you quite an interesting problem. Uh, yes, well, you see, I've already got quite an interesting problem for tonight. Good evening. Good evening. I see we are interrupting something. Miss Tony Merrill, may I introduce Dr. Brian Stanley, Dr. Reginald Landers. How do you do? How do you do? I do hope you'll excuse my dress. It seems David's better with a scalpel than he is opening a bottle of wine. Now, Reginald practices on some damned little island off the Irish coast. He's found a body without any trace of bone. <clears throat> no bones. Yes, well, of course, this is quite a common occurrence. I'm I mean, serious, Doctor. I get... I'm sorry, Doctor. 
I didn't mean to imply any lack of ability on your part, but this is rather difficult to accept. I can show you the body. He did a complete autopsy. No bones? No bones. Well, any outward signs, contusions, lacerations? Not a trace. That's why we're tossing it into your lab. You're the young genius. Well, I hate to disappoint you, gentlemen, but I've never heard of anything like this. What was the medical history? Practically no medical history. He was a strong, healthy farmer. Interesting problem, eh? Very. I should like to see the body. I was planning on going up to have a look at it myself. Like to come? Yes. Good. When you discover what it is, I'm sure they'll call it West's disease. This sudden humility astounds me, Brian. Well, they name so many after me, old boys liable to cause confusion. <laughs> when were you planning on leaving? Tonight, but we'll have to charter a plane. You could use my father's plane. We need a seaplane. It's a helicopter. That's nice of you, Tony. Ah, but there's a catch. I should have known. I'm going with. No, 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 that's impossible. We don't know what we're up against. David's right. It's an unknown disease. We can't anticipate the effects. Nevertheless, I'm going. Time is important, gentlemen. Oh, quite so, quite. Yes, I know. Very well, then. We accept your offer and the condition. Well, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll telephone my father. We'll stop by my lab on the way and pick up some equipment. Right. I won't be able to wait for you. Your father needs a helicopter first thing in the morning. That's all right. Is it? Don't seem to have much choice. Well, I'll come back as soon as I can. It might take a couple of days, though. All right. Well, it looks as though we'll be marooned on the island for a few days. This means we won't have any contact with the mainland. I can't take the emergency launch back with me. It's too late to make any other arrangements now. We just have to make do. I'm sorry. I had no idea my father would be using the helicopter. What the devil did Napoleon do on that island of his to keep himself busy? He invented solitaire. I have a much better game in mind. Can three play? Fascinating game, solitaire. John, how's Mrs. Bellows? Well, those pills you give her did the trick all right. Good. Ah, oh, this is Constable Harris. May I introduce Dr. Stanley, Miss Merrill, and Dr. West. How do you do? How do you do? Does anyone on the island know anything about Ian? Nope. Have you been in touch with Phillips? No, he still won't answer. Phillips? Dr. Lawrence Phillips. Oh, Dr. Phillips. What's he doing out here? Well, this is where he set up his laboratory. He could be a great help. You've got to get to him first. He's quite a recluse. Oh, who is he? What does he do? Top men in cancer research. Well, before we do anything, let's go and look at that body. Not a very pretty sight. I intend to make the first incision here. Agreed? Agreed.
Here's something interesting. There are a series of minute punctures in this dermal segment. Look. That's odd. Let's collect segments from other parts of the body. Try staining it with eosin. Right. It's the same with all of them. They're all over the body. I've never seen anything like these punctures before. Then something could have entered the body through those punctures? Oh, like what, for instance? It's possible that some kind of enzyme was introduced into the body through the punctures. If they are punctures, I mean, I can't tell if they open inwards or outwards. They could be either punctures or ruptures. Something came out or some organism producing an enzyme went in. There's not one trace of calcium phosphate in the whole body. Then this enzyme, or whatever it is, seems to attack and break down the calcium phosphate. A major component of human bone. But we still don't know if there's any connection between the perforations and the absence of bone. I mean, they could be simply two evidences of a similar syndrome. Well, we'd have to assume it. If we only had more complete laboratory facilities. There's Phillips' lab, but I don't know if he'll talk to us. He'll talk to me. How well equipped is he? I've never seen it, but I believe it's quite complete. Well, don't tell me the lights are going to fail. We have been having trouble with that generator recently. Well, let's get up to Phillips' place. All right. I'd better leave and load for Constable Harris at his house, just in case. What a climate. How do they stay healthy? Does that generator supply all the light on this island? All the electrical power. I've been after them for months to fix it. Is that the house up there? That's it. Good Lord, it looks like Wuthering Heights. again. I don't think it'll do much good. We must get into that lab somehow. I'll have a look down the side. You got a torch in the car? Yes, I have. There we are. Thanks. Now you wait here. I'll find a way. Found another body. The same as the other. Oh. 
Where's the laboratory? I don't know. I've never been here before. Come on, we'll find it. Let's try down here. Isotopes. He's got as much equipment here as I have at the university. There's the lab. signs of a struggle where you found Bellows? We couldn't really tell. It was in a cave. Since Phillips had no contact with the villagers, I think we can rule out a contagious disease. Well, whatever it was, it must have started in this lab. Bellows' body was found not far away. If it did start here, it might be moving down the peninsula towards the village. Well, from the look of this place, they were either fighting something or the death throes were pretty violent. Why don't we collect Phillips' notes and study them? Could give us a lead on what happened. All right. Come in. You're just in time for a cup of tea. John, I found one of my horses dead. At least I think it's one of my horses. It's all soft and flabby. Where'd this happen? In my field. Oh, look, I've got to go and tell Dr. Landers about this. He's up at Phillips's place, according to this note. Then we'll go down and take a look at your horse. In the meantime, don't mention this to anyone. Why not? Don't ask a lot of foolish questions. Just do as I say. Now, you go on about your business. I'll let you know everything in a little while. While you get started, I'll go over and tell Harris we're back. Right, then meet us here. We've got a lot of material to go over. I'll be back shortly. Oh, I could do some food and a lot of coffee. It's been a hard day.
Commandos! A horrible looking mess. Well, good morning, Dr. Sanders. Good morning. Has anyone seen Constable Harris? He said he'd meet you at the Phillips place. He's gone up to my fields to look at my horse. What's that? I said he'd look for you at the Phillips place. My horse is dead and he's gone up there. What happened to your horse? If it is my horse, it's just a bloody mess, a, a pile of flesh. In your fields? Yeah. The other side of the island. What did you say? N nothing, nothing. Excuse me, Peter. I, I, I've got to be going. Wait, what's going on around here? I, I can't explain now. There's some peculiar goings-on going on in this island. It was a bit abrupt on the doctor's part. You may be right. I'll go and see Campbell. Look, you're the head of the island, Campbell. What do you plan to do about this? Well, there's no good dithering about. You'd better go and talk to some of the farmers and then see Dr. Landers. One of the islanders has found his horse on the other side of the peninsula. The same thing. Constable Harris has gone up to Phillips' place. We must have missed him when we were coming back. Did you find anything? Well, Phillips was certainly working on cancer research. He was trying to create some, some form of living matter to counteract the cancer cells. What do you think? Well, simply that he might have succeeded in creating some form of life up there in his lab. That caused these deaths? Perhaps. We haven't got very far into these notes. Do you want to go up and take a look at that dead horse? Then we can pick up Harris. I suppose we should let him know what's going on, at least as much as we know. Good morning. morning. Hello, Tony. Morning. You all look as though you've been up all night. We have. How about some breakfast? Oh, we've just had supper. We have to go up to Philip's place now. Oh, right. Let's go. I'm afraid you can't come. Why not? It might be dangerous. What might? Look, last night we went up there and found four more bodies. Now, we think they created something in that laboratory that's causing all these deaths. What do you mean, something? Well, just that. We don't know what we're up against yet. Listen, if you think there's something running loose on this island, you can't leave me alone. Tony, this could Please. be... Please, don't leave me alone. Perhaps you're right. on the rear window. For what? Well, I'm not quite sure. What did it look like? Well, it was... I don't know. It was greyish. Oh, I don't know. Think carefully. This is important. Well, there was a strange sound. What kind of a sound? I don't know. It was... Let's have a look.
Quiet, hold it. Come back to the car. If there is something in there, we better not get too close until we know what we're up against. What do you think is in there? I don't know. But let's not take any unnecessary risks. Oh, especially with me. Well, we better get Harris and go back to the village. We might need some help. That's his bicycle. Tony, you stay in the car. I'm not staying here with all those things running around. Oh, let her come. I wouldn't want to stay out here alone. It's too damn creepy. All right, but let's stick close together. Harris? Constable Harris? Harris? Let's see if it's in the basement. Come on, let's try and get through them. Wait. Let me try first. remain inactive long. Listen to me. They're inactive now because they divided, but we don't know for how long and we can't stay here, so come on. Oh, David, I'm so frightened. So am I. Are you all right? No. Here, into the car, quick. I'm trying! 
think that's got it. Drink it. Oh, David. Come on. I want you to get some sleep, and this will do the trick. Oh, I'm so scared. I've never seen anyone die before. Now, don't think about it. We'll find an answer. We've got to. I've never seen anything so horrible. Neither have I. Now, you just relax and try and get some sleep. What's going to happen to us? Nothing will be all right. Are you sure? Of course. I'm just sorry I ever brought you here. Oh, there's no reason for you to be sorry. I wanted to come. David. Yes? Are you really sorry I came? I won't let you down. I know you won't. We'll get out of this summer. Somehow. She? I gave her a sedative. She's resting. Good. I could do with a little sedative myself. What did you find out? Well, I've got them in chronological order now, but the last notes were a couple of days out. What's the entry? It seemed to be just a personal note, something about Philip's dog getting an overdose of radiation. Anything else? Well, they're attempting to get the nuclei to fuse, but look at this protein structure. It isn't adenosine triphosphate. Hmm. Sorry, Dunley. The store's been closed today. Have you seen Dr. Landers? Not since 7 o'clock this morning. He left in his car with two men and a girl. Strangers. What strangers? Well, the ones that came in on the plane last night. What plane? Where are they? Well, maybe they're over at the inn. Come on. Hey, what about my goods? You check that in 404. Mm. You see? Uh, hello. Are you the folk that are with Dr. Landers? We've been working with him, yes. Who are you? I'm Roger Campbell, the head of the island, and this is Peter Argyle, who runs a general store. How do you do? I'm Dr. West, and this is Dr. Stanley. How do you do? How do you do? And uh, where's the doc? Dr. Landers. I'm afraid Dr. Landers is dead. Dr. Landers dead? How did it happen? Look, won't you please sit down? Well? Now, this is very difficult to explain. But there are some creatures loose on this island, and they're dangerous. What do you mean? What are they? We're not sure. But we believe they're the result of Dr. Phillips' experiments. What do you mean, creatures? I wish I could tell you more, but we just don't know exactly what they are. Creatures? Doctor, this is a bit hard to take. I assure you, we're not mad. Dr. Phillips, in the course of his experiments, created some kind of living organism that kills. And that's what happened to Dr. Landers? Yes. And we'll need a lot of help from you if this island is going to survive. Survive? Well, what do you want us to do? Well, first of all, I'll need ten good men besides yourselves. 
Oh, I can find those for you, all right. Good. Then I want you to get all the villagers together in an hour. That's short notice. Well, I think we can get them together in the meeting hall. Right. I'll let you know everything more fully then. Well, you'd better go and tell the constable. I'm sorry. You're too late. He's dead. The constable, too? Yes, and Ian Bellows. Oh. You know, we have had reports of animals dying. It seemed as if they had no bone. Yes, where did these happen? Several places in the northern part of the island. Has anything occurred near the centre of the island? No, just north of the centre. We haven't much time. They're moving. How many are there? Please, we'll explain everything at the hall. We've got to finish these notes. Oh, we'll do as you say. Thank you. Now, they tried experiment 1165. Yes. And if you compare that with 1143, you can see that the results were negative. That's all we know at the moment. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? I'm Dr. West, and this is Dr. Stanley. Now, we've completed going over Dr. Phillips's notes, and I must warn you that we're faced with a very dangerous situation. Dr. Stanley? Let me explain what we have discovered so far. In order to understand the nature of cancer, Dr. Phillips is trying to create living cells, cells that he hoped would attack the cancer. He based his creation on the carbon atom, which is the basis of all life on this planet. He did not succeed, but what he probably succeeded in creating was some form of life based on the silicon atom. Now, these silicates, as we call them, eat animal bone, human bone. You see, Dr. Phillips gave life to some kind of organism something that we know nothing about. They have an external skeletal structure which is tough and resilient. Dr. Landers couldn't hurt it with an axe, and when we ran over one, it wasn't harmed. Oh. We, uh, we haven't found a way to destroy them yet, but we intend to attack them with everything we can. From Dr. Phillips' notes and our own experience with them, we calculate that these creatures divide every six hours. There are about 64 silicates on the island at this moment. Oh. There will be 128 by 6 o'clock this evening, 256 by midnight. Oh. And if the multiplication continues until the end of the week, there'll be about a million of them. Oh. Now, please, please, I must have your attention. Please. Now, look, the only ultimate way to stop them, if all other attempts fail, is to deny them food. We want all of you to move into this building with supplies, we want the cattle rounded up and brought to this end of the island. You must keep calm. Fear and panic will defeat us just as surely as the silicates. We need all your help and your cooperation. We must work together. Right, now, uh, the following men meet me in the room out the back there. Uh, Morton, uh, Denley. Are there any guns on the island? Plenty. And what about dynamite? I've got three cases of it at the store. Good. And we ought to make some petrol bombs as well. We just don't know what'll work with those things. We'll send out three scouts. Here, here, and there. Dunley, you and two others. The rest of you gather up the equipment and meet, uh, here. You all know the groups assigned to you. Uh, Williams, Martindale, will you round up the cattle and bring them along to Williams Field there, close by the village? Right. Let's get moving. Now, can I rely on you to see that everything's handled in the meeting hall? Yes, of course. I think I can cope. Fine. Now, make sure all the supplies are organized properly and try to keep them from panicking. Mm -hmm. I will. David. Hmm? Take care. I'll do my best. Now, don't worry. We'll be back, whether we destroy them or not. How many of them can you count? About 25, as far as I can see. Have you got everything? I think so. Where's the Geiger counter? What do you need that for? Well, if those things are radioactive, we'll have to protect ourselves against radiation. Hey there, give us a hand. Halsey, you and your men take the dynamite. Morton, you bring the petrol bombs. Thank you. 
No good, we've hit it several times. They don't seem to be moving very fast. I'm going to try and cross that one's trail and get a Geiger reading. Careful, don't get too near to it. Nasty little creatures, aren't they? We better try the petrol bombs. There wasn't any sign of radioactivity. Well, that's something, anyway. The rest of you stay here. I'll get up closer. All right, but watch it. Dynamite. Nothing seems to get through to them. At the rate they're moving, they should reach the village by midnight. What else could we do? Starve them. Mr. Campbell! What is it, Dunley? In Parsons Cove. It's one of the silicates. It's dead. Are you sure? Well, it hasn't moved for 20 minutes. 
And another thing, that, that great Dane of Phillips is nearby. Half eaten. Phillips' dog. You remember in the notes, the dog had an overdose of radiation. Let's have the Geiger counter. Loaded with radioactivity. Radioactive too. Let's put them both on the truck and take them back to the clinic. found a way to destroy the silicates. Oh. But we'll need the help of everyone here. Now, we're going to examine a dead one, and I think it'll give us the information we need. In the meantime, you must all stay here and listen to Miss Merrill. Do as she says. Can you stop there? Look, your job is to keep the people here and keep them busy at all costs. I'll try, but what have you found out? I haven't got time to explain now, but we'll be in the clinic if you need us. The outer shell is impenetrable. We've done everything we can to pierce it. We know that radiation will kill them. How? The dog was contaminated with strontium-90. That affects the bone. The silicate ate the bone plus the strontium-90. That's how it died. The problem is how to introduce the radiation into their systems. Can it be done? Well, Phillips had a large supply of isotopes. If we can get enough strontium-90 at his place, we can contaminate the cattle. Now, the silicates eat the cattle and... Well, anyway, it's a hope. Can you move the cattle closer to the village to keep them away from the silicates until we're ready? Yes, we can put them in my cattle yard. Then do so immediately. Dr. Stanley and I are going up to Phillips's place. Now, if we don't come back, you'll have to get the strontium-90. But we don't know anything we'll about it. We'll tell you what to do. Dave, stop the car. What is it? Look over there. Silicates. Well, there more of them. Keen on going down in their saddle again. You look safe. Brian, there must be some instrument here that they used to contaminate the animals when they were experimenting. Let's have a look around. What about this? That's it. Better put these on.
Got the gloves. I'll put this in the car. Right. How are you feeling, Brian? As well as can be expected. He's had a lot of pain. No, not much. I'll give you another shot of morphine. First you do a rather sloppy bit of surgery, and now you want to turn me into a drug addict. Well, it's your choice. I don't need it. All right. We will give you another transfusion. Uh, one more transfusion, and I'll be a full-blooded Irishman. I think he's feeling a little better.
Is that all the cattle there are? That's all. Aye, most of them. The very few escaped the roundup. Well, let's hope we've got enough strontium-90. Let him through one at a time. Cut down the shots on the last few. Do you think it'll be enough? I don't know. Let's get it back to the hall. We've got to get those lights strung up. You done it? Uh, right, give us a boat. Okay, you please. Uh, yeah. That's it. Well, what if it doesn't work? Then we'll just have to stay here until they send help. Our biggest worry is that they'll panic. They must be made to understand. They're scared to death. So am I. We're all scared, but if they go outside, it's certain death. Those things will be all over the building, won't they? Probably. Now, look, you've got to keep the people calm down, Campbell. They trust you. Well, I'll do my best. Those lights we strung up are a strain on the generator. That would really cause a panic. Well, I've got some torches and candles. Let's pray we don't have to use them. And food to last for a week, anyway. You've got to convince the villagers of that. Our one hope is that the silicates will starve if the strontium doesn't work. Or at least the lack of food may cut down the multiplication. Are you going out front to have a look? Yes, but I'm going to see Stanley first. No, I'll talk to the people. You huh? move around amongst them and keep them occupied. Get uh, help from Dunley and some of the other fellows. Right. Well, I've injected the cattle, but we ran a little short of the strontium-90, so I had to cut down the amount on the last few. Well, if it doesn't work, we'll just have to sit tight till your helicopter arrives. Or the boat. When will the silicates get here? Well, it's a little after ten. According to the last positions, about an hour and a half. What about the division time? Well, that may take some time, and there aren't that many cattle. But you get some rest. Perfect time for a nap. But you will let me know if anything unusual happens, won't you? We've got to get out of here. Where can we go? We can't reach the mainland. Look, if you'd seen what that thing did to Artie Morton, you'd swim for it. How's it? Shut up. Listen, Orland. If anyone leaves this building, they'll be killed for sure. And we're safe enough in here. We've got enough food and water to wait. I'm so frightened, Mr. Campbell. Now, if you do as we say, you've got nothing to fear. Will you trust me? Yes. yes. Now, listen, Halsey, and listen well. If I hear another sound out of you, I'm going to smash your face in and throw you out for those things to get it. Now, I'm talking to you straight, man. Do you understand? Mr. Campbell, I can't stand do anymore. you understand? Mind that you do. Now, there's nothing to fear. We'll be all right as long as we stay here. Are you sure? Sure. Why, I've stocked this place with supplies on credit. He's a much better colour. He'll rest now. Now what? Well, I think you could use some rest too, young lady. Oh, I suppose we all could, really. So why don't you go and lie down? I'd rather not. Not now. David. Hmm? Do you really think we're going to get out of this? Well, I think we, we stand a good chance, a very good chance, yes. But you don't believe that, do you? Not 100%, no, but I'd like to believe it. Tell me. I've never been... I've never been much good at, at being serious with a woman before now, but, well, if we get out of this, I will... Don't say anything more. Not here. Not now. Yes, I'd better be getting outside. It's nearly midnight. David, be careful.
Hatley getting restless. Aye. They're moving around a lot. How are the people taking things? Oh, I think they'll be all right. Some of the boys are moving around, keeping the talk going. Good. <laughs> How many do you think? Hard to tell. About a hundred? And they didn't divide. It doesn't look like it. Well, this is it. It's a nightmare. It's all over. They're coming this way. Not stop. No. Good Lord, look. They're dividing. That means the effect of the strontium will be halved. I'd hoped it would work before they divided. We'd better get inside. Tell the people it may take some time for the strontium to work. Will it work? I wish I knew. Brian, they've divided. What does that mean? It means that the power and the effect of the strontium is cut in half. Did they divide before or after they ate the cattle? After. Oh, that's something. It's not much, but it's something. How's your arm? I'm trying not to think about it. It may take some time for the strontium to work, if it works. You don't like the way the lights are working. The generators have both had it. They're coming. I can hear. I'd better talk to them. Quiet, Hold everyone, it. please. Hold it. Please try and be quiet. Now, don't panic. We expected them around the building. We've got to give it time to work. Light the candles and the lanterns. Take it easy. Take it easy. Quiet, please. Quiet. That's what I was afraid of. They're frightened without the light. If they start breaking out of here... Yes, I know. Come on. We've got a job to do. David, what's happened to the light? Quiet! Tony, be careful. They're panicking as it is. I'm sorry. Look, we've got to set an example. Come on, stay here. I'll choose anyone that moves. I mean it. I'll choose anyone that moves. Now get back to your places. Keep away from the windows and the door. <laughs> oh, look out! <laughs>
done it, they're dead. Oh, David. Darling, it's all over. We're all right now. And now my hand itches. Oh, shut up, Brian. Watch it, boy. I'll sue you for malpractice. As soon as we get on, we'll radio ahead for aid. We'll need a lot of help to clean up the island, bury the dead. They'll send everything. Should be here by this afternoon. Phillips had never started this thing. No, Phillips was just trying to help humanity. Science has its risks, but the risks aren't enough to hinder progress. Have you searched the island thoroughly? Yes, several times. We killed them all, I'm certain of that. Every time I think of those things. Well, don't think about them. Just try to get them out of your mind. It's easier said than done. I know. What's going to happen to the villagers? We'll send back help. You know, we were lucky this is an island. If it had happened anywhere else, I don't think we would have been able to destroy them. 